Hello students, how are you all? I hope all of you are doing really well. So students, today we are going to study a chapter from your moment's book, the first chapter, which is The Lost Child. It is written by Mulk Raj Anand. So students, as you can see in this picture, there is a boy who is going to a fair with his mother and his father. So students, I hope all of you have been to fair and you know many people they go to fair with their friends or their families to have a really good time to see what all they are selling in the fair and enjoy and have a good time. So let's see students what all we have in this chapter. A child goes to a fair with his parents. He is happy and excited and wants the sweets and toys displayed there. But his parents don't buy them for him. Why then does he refuse when someone else offers them to him? So let's start the chapter. It was the festival of spring. From the wintry seeds of narrow lanes and alleys emerged a gaily clad humanity. Students, the meaning of alleys means a garden or a park which has trees on both the sides. And gaily means happily. So there were people who were really nicely dressed, they were very happy and they were enjoying the environment of a fair. Some walked, some rode on horses, others sat, being carried in bamboo and bullock carts. So here it has been written that how many people they were coming to the fair. Some were walking, some were coming on horses, some were sitting on bullock carts and like that. One little boy ran between his father's legs, brimming over with life and laughter. Brimming means someone, when, you, when someone is full of happiness, they are feeling really happy. So they become so much, uh, they enjoy so much that it becomes overflowing. So similarly, this little boy, he was, his happiness was overflowing because he was going to a fair with his family. Come child, come called his parents as he lagged behind, fascinated by the toys in the shops that lined the way. So students, whenever we go to a fair, we see that there are so many shops that are selling so many exciting things that can be toys, that can be sweets, that can be flowers. So this little boy, he was so much fascinated when he saw the toys that he lagged behind. His parents had to call, come, come. He hurried towards his parents, his feet obedient to their call, his eyes still lingering on the receding toys. Lingering means that lasting for a long time. And receding toys means the toys that has been left behind. Okay. As he came to where they had stopped to wait for him, he could not suppress the desire of his heart. Even though he well knew the old, cold stare of refusal in their eyes. So his father never allowed him to buy anything. Even though he wanted something very badly, he really wanted it. But his father said, no, you cannot have it. So here the word code means having no feeling of affection. Generally also we say that he is a cold hearted man, which means that he is a, having a heart which has no affection. He doesn't have love or affection for anybody. I want that toy, I want that toy, he pleaded. His father looked at him red-eyed in his familiar tyrant's way. Tyrant means cruel way. So the moment the boy said, Papa, please, I want that toy, I want that toy, his father got really angry and he started to stare at him. How dare you? I will not let you buy any of the toys. So we all know that he was a kid. Like any of, of the kid, he also wanted to buy toys. But as I told you earlier, his father was very cruel and he did not let him buy anything he wanted. His mother, melted by the free spirit of the day, was tender and giving him a finger to hold. So his mother really felt bad that the boy is not allowed to have any toy. She really cared for the boy. So she gave him her finger and asked him to hold it and said, Look, child, what is before you? It was a flowering mustard field, pale like melting gold as it swept across miles and miles of even land. So students, you must also have seen that 
mustard field they are very large in like area wise so they are yellow flowering uh, mustard they look very tempting to eyes because it's very bright in color and it looks like melting gold as you can see in this picture child there is a mustard field and there are some butterflies or dragonflies that are coming now students like i told you the meaning of the word tyrant so can you please recall what is the meaning of the word tyrant tyrant means cruel now my second question is what did the child's mother showed him she showed him a large field of mustard now let's move ahead a group of dragonflies were bustling about on their gaudy purple wings intercepting the flight of a lone black bee a butterfly in search of sweetness from the flowers so as you have seen that in the mustard field many dragonflies they come also bees come so there were dragonflies and here the word bustling means full of lively activity they are just buzzing around they are flying here and there so they were full of lively activity and gaudy means something which is extremely bright so they had very extremely bright purple wings okay and the word intercepting here means to stop or to interrupt so like the bees also came in the mustard field to look for or to suck the sweetness from the flowers the child followed them in the air with his gaze till one of them would still its wings and rest and he would even try to catch it so the child was so much fascinated looking at the these like uh, butterflies and dragonflies his gaze means his attention he was looking at him at, at these uh, butterflies and other dragonflies with full care but he even tried to catch them because as a child we all know that how much we are fascinated to catch a butterfly you must have also tried in your homes or in your gardens to catch a butterfly but it would go fluttering flapping up into the air when he had almost caught it in his arms then his mother gave a cautionary call come child come come to the footpath so it is very difficult to catch a butterfly because it always moves it's always flutter and flap so the butterflies and dragonflies they were fluttering and flapping in the air and he was not able to catch it It's because his mother called him and said come child let's go to the footpath he ran towards his parent gaily and walked abreast of them for a while being however soon left behind attracted by the little insects and worms along the footpath that were teeming out from their hiding places to enjoy the sunshine so his he was walking very happily gaily means very happily and he's walking abreast means he was walking side by side in the same direction of the parents but soon he was left behind now can you tell me why he was left behind yes he was continuously left be behind because he was very busy looking at different different things looking at stalls looking at mustard field so he was so much attracted by these things that he always lagged behind his parents went ahead of him now this time what did he see he saw that there were so many insects and so many worms they were coming out they were coming out in large quantities from their hiding places to enjoy the sunshine like i told you it was a like a uh, weather of spring and in spring everything is very bright and sunshine and these worms also enjoy coming out in warm yes come child come his parents called from the shade of grove where they had seated themselves on the edge of a well he ran towards him so students here the word grove means a small wood or a group of trees so his parents went there and they had seated themselves a shower of young flowers fell upon the child as he entered the grove and forgetting his parents he began to gather the running petals in his hand a lot of flowers young flowers they fell upon the child and he was feeling really excited and he started to gather the petals like he did his hands like this and he started to collect the petals that were falling from upside but lo he heard the queen of doves and ran towards his parent shouting the dove the dove 
the raining petals dropped from his forgotten hands. Now, as he was collecting the flowers in his soft hands, he suddenly saw a very exciting bird, that is, the dove. So, students, you as you also know that the bird dove is known for the symbol of peace. It it symbolizes peace. So, the child was so excited to see the dove that he forgot that he was collecting the petals, and petals were dropping from his hands. And he was like he could hear the cooing of doves. Cooing of doves means cooing means the sound the doves. Um, like it's it's a sound of uh, dove birds. So they were cooing, and he was shouting that Papa, Mama, see we have there is a dove. There is a dove. As you can see, this is a picture of a dove. It's fully white in color and kind of look like sparrows. Come, child, come. They called to the child, who had now gone running in wild capers round the banyan tree and gathering him up. They took the narrow, winding footpath which led to the fair through the mustard fields. So again, again, they have to call, "Come, child, come, come, child, come," because the child was lagging behind. He could not match the pace of the parents because they were going straight. Into the fair, but this boy, this young boy, he was so much distracted by the things around him, very exciting, colorful things around him, that he always lagged behind. Now here the word capers means leaping or jumping in a playful manner. When you also get excited, you you don't walk. When you get excited, you jump. They were leaping and jumping in a very playful manner. As they neared the village, the child could see many other footpaths full of throngs. Throngs here means huge crowd. Okay, they were converging to the whirlpool of the fair, and felt at once repelled and fascinated by the confusion of the world he was entering. So he saw that a huge crowd was converging. Converging means gathering, gathering in the fair because obviously many people will come to the fair. They want to enjoy it and they want to you know, have a good time. So they were coming, and so he was really confused. and he was also very fascinated at the same time he was having dual emotion that f- first of all when he saw the crowd he repelled and then he started to feel very fascinated by a huge crowd that was gathering around him a sweet meat seller hawked gulab jamun rasgulla barfi jalebi at the corner of the entrance and a crowd pressed round his counter at the foot of an architecture of many colored sweets decorated with leaves of silver and gold so as soon as he was entering into the fair he could see a sweet seller you must have also seen and how they hawk they call for customers similarly he could see that there was a sweet meat seller and he was selling these things and he is comparing the sweet shop with the architecture because you know there were heaps of different different sweets some sweets were of this height some sweets were of this height so the height was differentiated and they were decorated with silver and gold foil so they look like some kind of architectural uh, buildings so he has compared to the the sweet to the architecture now here is a picture as you can see the uh, seller is sh- selling so many kinds of uh, sweets The child stared open-eyed and his mouth watered for that burfi that was his favorite sweet. I want that burfi, he slowly murmured. But he half knew as he begged that his play would not be heeded because his parents would say he was greedy. So without waiting for an answer, he moved on. So the child's favorite sweet was burfi and he really wanted that his mouth started to water. But he knew that he his parents will never agree to buy the sweet for him because they will say, "Oh, you are so greedy! You want sweets." So he did not even expect any answer from his parents, and he moved on. Now, students, tell me why did the child's parent had to say, "Come, child, come," again and again because he was staring at different stores and he lagged behind and he could not match the pace of the parents. Now, students, also tell me what was child's favorite sweet? Was it gulab jamun? No, the favorite sweet was burfi. Now let's move on and see what happens next. A flower seller hawked, a garland of gulmohar, a garland of gulmohar. The child seemed irresistibly drawn. He went towards a basket where the flowers lay heaped, and 
he half murmured, I want that garland. But he well knew his parents would refuse to buy him those flowers because he would say that they were cheap. So without waiting for an answer, he moved on. So he was really excited to see the flower seller. He was selling a garland of Gulmohar. And he said that I really, it was really impossible for him to resist. He really wanted that uh, Gulmohar's flower. But his parents again will not buy it for them, for him, because parents will say that the flowers are really cheap. So he did not wait for an answer and he again moved on like a good boy. A man stood holding a pole with yellow, green and purple balloons flying from it. The child was simply carried away by the rainbow glory of their silken colours and he was filled with an overwhelming desire to possess them all. So like in any fair, there are so many balloons that you get to see. And balloons are really, uh, you know, colourful and they're really bright. So we all want to have it. Even I want to have it. So just imagine, he was a really small kid. So he wanted to have all the balloons. Possess matlab to own. He really wanted to own all the balloons. So let's see whether his father allows him to buy it or not. But he well knew his parents would never buy him the balloons because they would say he was too old to play with such toys. So he walked on further. Again, as expected, his parents will never buy because they will say, you are a grown up kid, you don't need balloons to play. Come on, you are such a big child now. So again, he did not get any balloons. A snake charmer stood playing a flute to a snake which called itself in a basket. Its head raised in a graceful bend like the neck of a swan. While the music stole into its invisible ears like the gentle rippling of an invisible waterfall. The child went towards a snake charmer. But knowing his parents had forbidden him to hear such coarse music as the snake charmer prayed, he proceeded further. Now he was really drawn to the music of the uh, the music that the snake charmer was making to entertain the snake, and he really was enjoying that uh, music. He compared the music to a rippling of waterfall, but he knew that his parents will not allow him to hear such sound. The coarse music means unpleasant music. Okay. So he again, like he was doing before also, he without waiting for an answer, he proceeded ahead. There was a roundabout in full swing. Men, women, children carried away in a whirling motion. Shrieked, uh, shrieked means to utter a sharp sh sound. Okay. And whirling means to move in a circular motion. So as you can see, and you must have seen in real life also, the merry-go-round, it moves in a circular motion. And they were crying with dizzy laughter. Dizzy laughter means uh, when you're enjoying a ride, you're very excited and you kind of feel some giddiness in your stomach. So when you make such noises, it is known as dizzy laughter. The child watched them intently and then he made, made a bold request. I want to go on the roundabout. Please, father, mother. So till now we have seen that even though he really wanted to buy certain things, like he wanted to buy the garland, he wanted to buy the sweet, he wanted to have the balloons, he wanted to go near the snake charmer, he did not really request anything to the uh, parents. But now, when he saw the merry-go-round, he could not control himself, okay? And he watched intently means with full concentration. And he really made a bold request. Bold request means he, uh, like, pleaded. He requested his parents that I want to go on that roundabout. Roundabout means, again, the same ride. Please, father. Please, mother. So till here, we have seen that the child was in the fair enjoying with his family, but he was fascinated with a lot of things that he was coming around with. Okay, so in this class, we will study till here. And in the next class, we will see what happens, whether his father allows him to buy anything or whether his father allows him to go in the roundabout or not. Okay, what do you guys think? If you think that is father allowed, you please write down in your copies and we will see what all answers you have written. Okay.
in the next class we will discuss what happens further in the story so students we will just quickly summarize the whole chapter okay it was a spring time and uh, people were coming in the fair because you know it was spring and it was very bright and sunny times so in winters what happens we just stay in our home we just uh, wear some warm clothes and we don't go out because it's very chilly so when the spring has come people were wearing good dresses wonderful dresses and they have really um, they were really excited to go to the fair so many people were coming to the fair child also went to the fair with his parents and on the way he was looking at very very wonderful things like he saw the mustard fields he saw he even tried to catch the dragonfly but he was not able to catch he, he also saw that flowers were showering upon him and there are wonderful things like bright balloons then sweet shop he also saw the favorite sweet which was burfi and uh, the snake charmer the garland hawk uh, the gulmohar garland all these things he saw but he could not get any of these because his parent was his parents said that no you cannot have anything from the fair because you are too big to buy balloons or you are like and also you cannot buy the flowers because they are cheap so a sequence of events happened and he could not get anything from the fair but at the end of the like this passage we came to know that he really wanted to go and sit in the roundabout that merry go round and he had made a request to the parents that please let me go in the roundabout so till here we have learned that there was a child who goes to a fair with his parents and it was a spring season so as you know in spring everything is happy and everything is very bright the sun is hot and it's very warm outside so people generally in winters they do not go out they stay at home they stay warm at home so when this spring season had come so stu people were wearing good dresses they were dressing up themselves and they went out to the fair they went to the fair to enjoy and have a good time so this little kid he also went to the fair with his parents and some people were coming by walking some people were coming on horses some people were sitting in bamboo or bullock carts so these were the medium of transport through which people were coming to the fair now everything was very exciting because in a fair you see there are different stalls that sell different exciting things there are smell of nice dishes that are being cooked so the environment of a fair is very happy and happening okay so the child's parents always said come child come come child come because the child got so excited looking at different kind of stalls looking at butterflies looking at snake charmer looking at uh, garland shop so all these things really excited him and he was lagging behind continuously now students as you already know that the child was really excited to buy so many things from the market but his parents especially his father did not allow him to buy anything whenever he wanted to ask to buy something his father gave him a very cruel look he showed him his big eyes big red eyes that no you cannot buy anything so this is why he was not able to own any of the things from the fair now students as i told you it was really warm and sun has come out so the insects the small insects and small worms which goes down the ground because they do not come out in winter season so they were coming out in large quantities from the hiding places why they were coming out in large quantities to enjoy the sunshine to enjoy the warm the warmth of the sun so this also really got the child excited that small small worms and insects so they were coming out and the child was really having a good time looking at these small insects so as usual he again lagged behind and his parents started to call come child come so when he was entering into a grove where i told you that his parents were sitting at the edge of a well so when he was entering that grove of like there was a shower of raining petals so he got so excited and he started to collect the petals into his hands 
and as he was collecting the petals suddenly he st stared at the dove the dove was flying in the sky and the doves are really beautiful birds so he got excited and he said that look look there is a dove there is a dove in the sky and in this case what happened he forgot to collect the flowers that was showering from the sky and he uh, dropped the flowers from his hands again he was left behind because he was busy looking at the dove so his parents again called him come child come let's go why are you standing there and he was really happy he was jumping here and there he was um, he was not walking he was jumping because he was really happy that after so long he has come to a fair now what are the different sweet, uh, shops that we see in the market or in the fair i told you there was a sweet meat seller who was hawking gulab jamun rasgulla barfi jalebi so out of all these sweets the favorite sweet of the child was barfi yes very good now child really wanted to have the barfi but again he knew that his parents will say oh you're so greedy you want to have barfi oh my god you're such a greedy kid so he knew that his parents will not allow him to have the sweet so he moved on he did not expect any answer from the parent now as he moved ahead he saw a flower seller who was selling what he was selling a garland of gulmohar he again wanted to have those but again he thought no my parents will say oh you are flowers are really cheap you don't have to buy it so he didn't expect any answer again and he moved on as he was walking he saw that there was a man who was selling a, a lot of colorful balloons he really wanted to have the, those balloons he wanted to have all the balloons he wanted to have yellow red green purple all those shiny and silky balloons but again he knew that his father will say you are a grown up kid now come on who plays with balloon you are such a grown kid you don't have to play with balloons so he again could not even buy the balloons as he went ahead he stopped at a snake charmer who was playing a very melodious and very soft music that was trying to entertain the snake but again he could not listen to the snake charmer because his parents had not allowed him to hear such unpleasant music so he again proceeded further when he reached to a roundabout which was many of the child the parents men women all were having a very good time they were riding on the this particular roundabout ride so this time he really could not control himself and he requested with full confidence that i want to go on the roundabout please father please mother let me go so till here that we have studied that he requested a lot to his father and mother to go on the roundabout till now he really wanted to have so many things but he could not really have the courage to request his parents but now at this point when he saw the ride and so many people were enjoying on it they were laughing they were having good time so he also wanted to go on the ride so he requested he made a request that please father please mother let me go okay so anybody would get distracted with such nice uh, you know ride so he really also wanted to go and have ride on it so students we have read till here and in the next class we will see what happens whether he really was able to go in the ride or his father again uh, stops him from enjoying the ride so in this class till here we will study okay thank you we'll meet in the next class